the entrance antiphon for the fifth Sunday of Easter. O sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations, he has shown his deliverance. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us praise God in this holy Easter season. Let us humbly acknowledge our sins before him. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, Select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem 
increase greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt, you just, in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With a ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. For I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do, not, you, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I seen, have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen a Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak to on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, 
Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my brothers and sisters, first things first, very happy Mother's Day to all you moms and you grandmas and you mothers-to-be. I hope your family takes good care of you today as you deserve. Well, we've been hearing from St. John's Gospel all through the Easter season. It's always a treat. Uh, I don't know if St. John's is my favorite gospel, but certainly the top four. And, um, well, <laughs> beat the heck out of the Gospel of Judas, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I remember studying St. John's Gospel at Kendrick, and we had a very good professor, very good class, and the textbook was written by the famous Father Raymond Brown, famous in Catholic theological biblical circles anyway. Uh, the man was a giant, uh, a genius, you know, anal analysis and languages and oh my gosh, everything. I remember his, his I still have his two-volume set, Commentary on St. John's Gospel. I think the, the Gospel itself covers maybe 25, 30 pages of the Bible. But he wrote 1,500 pages commenting on St. John's Gospel. It was great, the background, the history, and all this. But the problem was that, you know, biblical scholarship uh, went through a, a revision in the 19th century with the German rationalists. They applied scientific analysis to the Word of God, which, you know, there, there could be some good in that. The problem was they did it with the rationalistic approach. Rationalism is the mistaken notion that the human mind is capable of understanding everything. Well, we can't. So by definition, anything supernatural, like miracles, uh, the human mind can't understand that. So the rationalists look for ways to explain these things away. And the fact that Jesus was both God and man, well, they, you know, that's supernatural. Supernatural faith, and the rationalists had no use for that either. These people turned Jesus into the Yogi Berra of the New Testament. You know Yogi. He was famous for his famous yogiism. He would make these statements that at first hearing to sound sensible, then you go, oh, what? You know? Like, for example, they were at a, re a pizzeria once, and he brought out his pizza and said, Yogi, should we cut your pizza into four pieces or eight? He said, better cut it into four because I can't eat eight. <laughs> you know, that was Yogi. He invited people to his house, and they said, Yogi, how do we get there? He said, well, you come down this road, and when you come to the fork of the road, take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, uh, well, finally, in his later life, somebody asked him the question, um, did you really say all that stuff, Yogi? He said, well, no, I never said all the stuff I said. So that's what the rationalists did to Jesus. They turned him into the guy who didn't say all this stuff. I know the Gospels quoted as saying all these things, but he didn't say that stuff. He said, the church put those words in his mouth. Well, Father Brown um, believed that the I am statements of Jesus were the, the ones you knew for sure, he said, because they're so outrageous that no person would say these things. I mean, we put these, you, you wouldn't expect somebody to say this stuff. Now, it's interesting that when Jesus, for example, says, I am the light of the world, and last Sunday when we heard him say, I am the gate, or I am the, the way of life, the true way of life, um, these are the things the Jews believed about the Torah. They believed the Torah, their law, was the light of the world. They believed the Torah was the gate. They believed the Torah was the way of the life. And so when Jesus says these things about himself, he's really getting highfalutin. The, the, the prophets quoted God the Father as saying, I am the good shepherd. Now Jesus is saying these things on his own. Yet saying all this, uh, Father Brown did not believe that Jesus knew that he was really God. Uh, now just unpack that for a second. How can God, who by definition is omniscient, all-knowing, not know who he is? Well, that's what these guys fell into, that Jesus didn't really know that he was God. So one day he was giving a conference and talking about it and telling the, the people, and he was talking mostly to PSR teachers and Catholic school teachers, and uh, he was saying that, yeah, of all the things that Jesus said, probably the I am statements, I am the bread of life, you know, I, all this stuff, are the most accurate ones. That we know for sure Jesus said them. 
And one little humble little PSR teacher in the back of the room said, but Father, how could Jesus, if he didn't know he was God, why would he take a piece of bread and say, this is my body? He's the only God could do that. And if he wasn't really God, how could he say, I am the light of the world, I am the, you know, the, the way of life? And Raymond Brown, God bless him, he was enough of a, a scholar to go, huh, I never thought of that. <laughs> Everything changed. It brought him around. But it really is the way it is, my brothers and sisters. Jesus said these things about himself because they're true. He is God. Pardon me, and all these things apply to himself. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through him. Now, does that mean that Muslims and Jews and Buddhists and Shintos and all those other religions have no shot at salvation? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Uh, what it does mean is that if they do have a shot at salvation, and they do, it's not because of Mohammed or Buddha or Moses or Abraham. It's because of Jesus Christ. I was up on the East Coast once several years ago, and I was talking with a gal who taught religion classes to the public school kids, PSR. And she was saying how they had a conference for PSR teachers in her diocese, and they were subjected to this one gal who supposedly is a Catholic theologian. And they actually paid this gal to come and talk to the teachers. And she made the point that Jesus was the savior of the Christians, and Mohammed was the savior of the Muslims, and that the Buddha was the savior of Buddhists, that Abraham was the savior of the Jews, etc., etc., etc. And I guess you take it to its fullest extension that Shirley MacLaine was the savior of the New Age people. You know. Nonsense. Absolute garbage. The point is that Mohammed never claimed to save anybody. Neither did the Buddha. They can't save anybody. That's the point. Only Jesus Christ can save us. And, you know, if you have an implicit faith in him, meaning that you don't necessarily understand, know, or believe the catechism, but you're trying to live a good person according to the grace that God has given you, well, that we call that an implicit faith. And you have that faith through grace, grace merited one for you by Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, there is only one way to the Father, and that's why we send out missionaries to help people to know. If you really want to know God, this is how you do it. You start by knowing Jesus Christ, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. I thank you for listening. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, as we reach out to you once more, placing our needs confidently yet humbly before you. For the Holy Catholic Church, that God will cleanse her from all sin, 
Save her from the fires of hell and strengthen and purify her shepherds to teach, govern, and sanctify his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the whole world will come to know Christ as the way, the truth, and the life, and worship him as their sovereign Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the Wuhan flu, for all the healing and all those afflicted with it, for the safety of those who care for the sick, for the rebuilding of our nation and restoration of its economy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our mothers, grandmothers, and mothers-to-be, that God will continue to bless them and to bless us through them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from deprivation and want, violence and in injustice, <clears throat> persecution and oppression, and for all the victims of the sins of others, that God will come quickly to their rescue, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls of our beloved dead, that they will enjoy forever the place prepared for them by our Savior in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, may the sacrifice that we offer today in obedience to Christ's command give you the worship you deserve from your humble creatures. We ask this in Jesus' name. He who is the way and the truth and the life forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. Your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual gift. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice and your Lord, and pray O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Overcome, therefore, with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, Mark, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, a big announcement is that the Archbishop has mandated the opening of all of our churches to public mass, not next weekend, but beginning Monday, May, Mar May 18th. So that's a week from tomorrow. I plan on resuming everything uh, the following weekend. There will be restrictions. Uh, we, have, we won't know till Tuesday what they are. But I suspect it will be things like social distancing and all that kind of stuff, washing your hands and no sign of peace and that kind of thing. Um, but other than that, we, you know, we plan on restoring back to full, full schedule as soon as we possibly can. Uh, I think we're through with all this nonsense, and I think it's time to be where we should have been all along. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Again, I want to be very clear. Uh, watch the parish website for details. I hope to send out a letter sometime this week with specifications. Um, but, you know, so, safe, so next Sunday will be just like today, but the following week after that, we'll be back to normal. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, <coughs> by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits. Seeking the ruin of souls.